Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Today's video is going to be about the 10 items you should really think twice before purchasing. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to throw a thumbs up down below and let's get straight into it. Number one on this list is going to be certain pairs of shoes. More like certain pairs of unnecessary shoes. You know, the shoes that we purchase that look cute in the window or on the mannequin and we think that they are going to look great in our wardrobe or in our closet in general. That is something you are going to have to think twice about before purchasing. For an example, say you go to the mall, you see these amazing red heels with a black bottom and you think they will look amazing for a couple outfits that you have in your wardrobe. Well, you decide to purchase the $80 heels, bring them home, and only wear them not even once a month. <laughs> because one, they really don't go with everything. Two, they hurt. And number three, you don't really like to wear heels. So that's one of the reasons why you really need to think twice when it comes to purchasing shoes. Now, when it comes to you being in the office all the time, if you have an office job, then yes, purchase a decent pair of shoes that are not gonna tire you out throughout the day that still look great. Neutral colors go with everything along with a low heel or a lower heel. Yes, it's not the sexiest, but who are you really trying to impress at work? Same thing goes for sneakers. If you are a runner, you're not gonna to wanna to purchase a nice pair of Nikes or a nice pair of Jordans. You're gonna to wanna to go with more of a hookah pair or a six or New Balance. Even though they are not the cutest or stylish shoes, they have well performance when it comes to running. I know this because my boyfriend is a runner. He's actually training for a marathon. So I always used to make fun of the way his shoes were. I was kind of like, those are ugly. He was like, I know, but it's the performance that they do. And I'm like, it sat in my head and I'm like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. I am so sorry. So definitely think twice before purchasing your next pair of shoes, you guys. And also with that in mind, you want to think of not just the color, not just if you're gonna wear them or not, but the budget. If you feel like you're gonna wear them all the time, you love the color, but the budget is out of your price range, look for something similar in a lower price range. Patience is key when it comes to purchasing items that you really need, so just be patient. Do not purchase shoes that are gonna sit in your closet forever until you decide to donate them or give them away. Number two is phone accessories. Need I say more with this? We really need to think twice when it comes to purchasing these fancy phone cases, these fancy pop sockets. We just need to think twice because they always end up breaking or we tend to get sick of them. I have never owned a pop socket at all. I just never felt the need to own one and I've always thought twice of what case I was going to have because I wanted it to just be versatile um, only because I remember purchasing a ton of phone cases thinking that my phone needed to match my outfits. It needed to match my basically my life. Um, I was dressing up my phone like it was my newborn child, which was not the right thing to do. Uh, now I stick with just a nice black. I've had this case since I wanna say December because this is a new phone. Since December, it is the Unicorn Beetle case. I'll have it linked down below. This is not sponsored. I love this case because of the fact that it also has a stand which I use to watch movies and stuff like that. Um, not just the stand, but it is super durable and it comes with a screen protector like already built inside. So it's something that I do not need to purchase. I've dropped this phone numerous times, like on co solid concrete, on anything you can imagine. I bring this phone with me to work while I'm in the kitchen. I dropped it so many times, even down the dishwasher. It didn't go in like the water part, but it went into the sink part and I had to take it out clean it off and I opened up the case. My phone was perfect. So needless to say, I thought twice about purchasing a phone case because I didn't want something that looked cute. I wanted something that was going to protect my phone because that's what phone cases do. And same thing with goes for other accessories. The sock pockets or whatever you want to call them. I forgot what they're called now, even though I just said it a little while ago. 
Um, those things, I feel like all they are is just to hold and I've seen numerous people buy a lot of them because it stops sticking after a while. So maybe you're better off getting a case that already has it built inside, like a metal one that has like a little ring inside so it doesn't fall off and you have to keep purchasing more and more and more. Not just that, but also like different kind of lens. I've seen like the exchangeable lens that goes on here. Like all phone accessories we should really think twice about because our phones uh, are basically meant to like call, text, do things like that. And I feel like we shouldn't be treating them like they are our children. Um, I feel like we should just treat them like technology, like they are meant to be treated and just have a decent, nice case, a nice adorable case and call it a day. Um, so definitely think twice before purchasing your next phone accessory. Think if it's going to be great for a longevity or they just think if it's good for your budget because I know a lot of phone accessories get fairly expensive. This case only cost me $20 and it hasn't broke. There's no wear and tear on it at all. So I thought long and hard about purchasing a phone case. So yeah, just rethink that you guys. Number three is fancy creams. Now I say this because we never know what's in the products that we are purchasing. You have this cream that says that it gets rid of wrinkles, fine lines, um, crow's feet, all that stuff. When in all reality it is filled with toxic chemicals that add more problems to your skin. Not to mention most of the time those creams are a waste of money because we use it for one week or one month and then we always forget to put it on and by the time we wanna put it back on, it's expired so we throw it out. Fancy creams are expensive. I feel like they do not work. Natural remedies work better. Um, when it comes to depuffing your eyes or getting rid of that look, an ice roller is the best, or what is it called, the jade roller? I call it an ice roller because I always put it in the freezer, but whatever you guys want to call it, a jade roller always wakes me up. I use it every morning. Sometimes I even use it at night. Uh, I'll also have that link down below, but I always thought twice of what products I was purchasing when it came to fancy creams. Same thing goes for hand lotion. I think twice before purchasing it. Is it vegan? Um, does it have a lot of chemicals in it? Is it good for my price range? Does it do what it says? So those are the things you wanna think of when it comes to fancy creams. I know Orle basically thinks that they can rewind the aging process on everybody, which I think it's a bunch of BS. Um, their products are filled and filled with chemicals. If you guys do not believe me, just Google it for yourselves. But what I'm trying to say is when the next time you are looking for a cream for your face or for your hands, rethink that purchase. Dig into that product a little bit more instead of just purchasing it because it's got a pretty bottle and it claims to get rid of your wrinkles for life. Number four is brand new items even though you already have decent items. Say you have a nice comforter and it's done you well. It has no rips, no stains, nothing like that but it's a new season and you feel like everyone's going from beige to a dark tan color now, since it's autumn. You feel the need to go out and purchase another comforter to have that fall vibe in your room. We're all guilty of this where we purchase a brand new item and we still have that same other item beside it. So you got two duplicates, just one is newer than the other. Most of the time we really need to think about purchasing that brand new item this comforter works perfectly fine. There's no need to purchase the other comforter. It keeps you warm, it's not stained, there's no holes. There's no need to just swap out the colors like that. I do have two comforters only because the first one was a gift and this one was actually made for winter. So the first one was actually just for me starting out my place and it's a very thin one for the summer because I moved in here in the summer so I was super grateful for that but I did need a heavier one for the winter so I purchased it because this the other one wasn't doing the job like it needs to do in the winter time if that makes any sense so I did rethink that per or this purchase I should say but when it comes to other things in your house such as plates if they do not break but you want a different whole style Rethink that. Do you really want a whole new style of plates and dish set? Even though what you have works perfectly fine, 
you just want a whole new look in your kitchen area, but you also would love to save some money. So my best bet for you, rethink that purchase, kind of rewind it. Think if you really truly need those brand new items, like your mind is telling you that you need them. Like I feel like you don't need brand new items. If you already have decent items, same thing goes for these guys again. Just because there's a new iPhone out, it doesn't mean that you have to go rush to the store, go to your phone company and give them your latest one or the newer iPhone, which they only, think of it, they're only like, what, a year apart? There's no need for it. You're better off waiting as long as you can to, uh, until this, like, this, this phone that you have dies. That's basically with everything. If something in my house needs to go, I rethink it twice because I'm like, all right, should I repurchase something like this or should I just stick with this, save some money and wait till it breaks? I feel like that's the best method that you can do when it comes to brand new items. Number five is hair products. Ladies, men, you guys know hair products are filled with chemicals and they're unnecessary. I get it. Some people do need hair products to tame their hair, but there are plenty of DIYs, plenty of other items such as aloe gel or you just get the whole aloe leaf. You can use that as a gel, which I told my sister about and that's what she uses for her son. There's so many different ways on how to not use hair products and just use what we have, basically like the coconut oil, all that stuff, in order to save money and also save your hair. Hair products are just filled with so many chemicals. It's, it's kind of scary if you wanna break down a whole entire bottle of hair product. Now, I'm not a hair expert, you guys. I just always rethink, or I always used to rethink my purchases when it came to hair products. I used to buy Bio Silk, Bedhead. Yes, they would smell amazing. Yes, they tend to add some nice shine to your hair, but I feel like they were always a waste of money because I would only use them once in a great while. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is the next time you want to purchase or repurchase your hair product, just maybe dig into that product a little more. Figure out what kind of chemicals are in it. Figure out what you can do to basically make your hair a little bit healthier without having the need to have this product in your hair constantly. Um, my hair used to be out of control when I was a little girl. I had like big puffy hair. What helped me was not the bio silk, not the bed head. It was basically growing out my hair. The longer my hair was, the more it weighed down so it wasn't as puffy. Some aloe leaf gel along with some black castor oil, those would be my hair mask. If I'm going out during the day, I will basically just put my hair in a braid the night before while I got out of the shower so it's nice and wet. So that's kind of what helps me instead of me always repurchasing hair products. So I thought twice before purchasing my next hair product and I haven't purchased one, I wanna say in like five years. I kind of got out of that way before I even became a minimalist. Number six is certain makeup items. For this one, I'm talking about the duplicates. I get it, we live in a very makeup world now. That is perfectly fine if you are into that lifestyle, by all means. I feel like a lot of makeup artists are very talented, but rethinking the whole purchasing another lipstick because the one you have isn't the right, right shade of pink, you want a lighter pink, those are the ones we need to really sit down and think like, do I really need this? For me back in the day, I would have a ton of foundation sticks, um, bottles, so many little things of foundation everywhere to the point where I think I had like three draws filled with foundation and also like a draw filled with mascara. I never thought of, oh my God, I'm repurchasing duplicates like over and over again, what am I doing? Uh, even though I haven't even used up the bottle that I have, I'm still repurchasing the same one because it was either on sale or because I felt like I needed it. When it comes to makeup, we do get sucked in with the beauty world now, especially on YouTube, Instagram. But when you really sit down, sit, just sit in front of your makeup collection and realize what you use, make a pile of what you use weekly, monthly, whatever you use, and on the other side, put what you never use just to see how much duplicates you've actually purchased for no reason and how much waste you've created along with the money you've wasted as well. 
it definitely turns out to be a big shock. I know for me it was when I started decluttering my makeup, it was a wake up call to realize, Kira, stop purchasing duplicates. There's no need for it. They will still be in the store next week, a month ahead, a year from now, 10 years from now, there will still be mascara and foundation in the store so you can just go buy it when one runs out. Eight, and this is a funny one, you guys. This is healthy food items that you hate eating. For me, I can't stand green beans. I can't stand spinach, but I would purchase them feeling the need that, all right, I'm gonna get them because they're healthy and even though I don't like them, I, I, you know, I need to get into this vegetable world since I am vegan. Well, what happened to those two items every week or every month in my house? I would throw them out because I never wanted to eat them. I only bought them with the mentality of I'm gonna get it because it's healthy and because I need it for my body. I never ate neither of those two items. So I just basically stopped purchasing them and replaced them with vegetables that I do like, such as cauliflower, kale. I love kale, especially kale chips. Like if you make your own kale chips, it's amazing and they still have all the same nutrients as spinach would have, as green beans would have, but without that taste that I did not like. So rethink on your grocery list. If you have healthy items on your list and you only purchase them because they are healthy and you hate them, then don't buy them. Buy something that is still healthy, but something that you prefer to eat rather than to just sit in your fridge, throw out, and then when you're at the grocery store again, purchase it again, and then it's just a vicious cycle around and around. I feel like that's how diets work too. Everyone says, I'm on a diet, and for one week they don't eat anything, or they're eating healthy, and then the next week they just crash. I feel like it, diets are a vicious cycle, so it's the same thing as buying healthy food. Just stick to a regimen that works for you. Because at the end of the day, life is way too short to not eat what you want to eat. I know for me, once in a great while, I will go get some vegan ice cream. And yes, I know it's not the healthiest, but again, life is too short. You should enjoy every minute of it. Number eight is rims for your car. Now, this is something um, not for everybody to rethink, mostly just some people. When I was in school, I noticed that a lot, a lot of people, a lot of kids would spend their money on rims for their car. Even though they needed brand new tires or they needed new tires in general, they would just get rims. Even though they would need new clothes, a new backpack or things like that, they would just get rims. Uh, I feel like it's a fashion statement. Same thing goes for the phone cases, same thing goes for the clothes some of us wear. It's all a fashion statement. It's all to impress others. It's not doing anything for us. Um, I feel like we should do things that matter to us and that are great for us. So when it comes to car accessories like that, unless you are doing like car shows and you know, you are really into that and that's fine. Most of the time people purchase rims to impress others or just to be like, look at me. Rethink about, sit down and think like, should I really spend $900 on rims? Or should I put that $900 towards a goal? in my life, like a goal where I wanna pay off my student loan or pay off my car insurance for the year. Maybe I should put that towards something a little bit more reasonable than just something that's going to be riding on my car every day. Number nine, and I've said this already in this list, a little clip of it, but I'm gonna say it again, and that is a new phone, even though Yaws works fine. Yes, the new iPhones come out every September, and we all jump around and wonder what new tech they put into it. What does it look like? What does it do? Um, how different is it from the last one? Oh, I want it because so-and-so has it. If we rethink this, then we could also save us so much money in the long run. I would definitely say you could actually keep an older phone for about five to six years. I've always kept all my cell phones around five years, like a five year mark. I never purchased a cell phone because it was brand new. I do have the iPhone XR because it was a gift because my iPhone 6 back in December broke completely. Like the charge port, the camera, everything was done. I waited until everything completely died. Kind of like how I wait for my cars to buy a new one. I wait for it to die and then purchase a new one. But yes, you do not need to purchase a phone just because there's a new model out when the phone you have works perfectly fine.
fine. Sure, you might not have three cameras on your phone, but you do have one camera and I'm pretty sure that one camera works great. And if it doesn't work great and if it's shaky or then maybe weigh out the pros and the cons, why you should get a phone, a new phone and why you shouldn't. Just weigh those options out and you will have a better reason on whether you should purchase the new phone or not. And the last one is going to be two things because I feel like they go hand in hand together and that is plastic straws and plastic toothbrushes. Two items that we don't need to even rethink about anymore. Two items that we just need to stop purchasing altogether. Plastic straws, you guys can, there's always metal straws out there. There's silicone straws. There's all those other straws that can replace the waste of those. Um, I will have some link down below, the ones that my sisters use. They even have some on their keychains that are collapsible. You just open it up and if you get Starbucks, you just say no straw or whatever. I know they still have plastic cups. You can even bring your own cup there. It's I've seen signs around here where if you bring your own cup, you get like a dollar off, which is cool if you drink coffee every day. This kind of saves you money. I'm not gonna preach to you guys about zero waste. I'm not a perfect person when it comes to that. I'm still working on it. Um, but I have switched quite a few things in my house. And the one thing out of this whole entire list, if you guys have to really take or rethink about, I would have to suggest plastic straws and plastic toothbrushes. Toothbrushes are really hard to find when it comes to wood ones. I've always had a little mishap with them, whether it was like the wood splitting, things like that. But I finally found a toothbrush that I've had since July and it's around the three, three month mark. On the package, it does say you could throw them out every four months. So that's where I'm going towards or gravitating towards. Um, they are made from bamboo. They come in like a cardboard box, which I just end up recycling. And I order them off Amazon and they are amazing. I have not thought about another plastic toothbrush ever again. Um, I'm glad that I was at the dollar store back in June and I was ready to pick up some plastic toothbrushes and then I put them back because I was rethinking, all right, I told myself that I was going to try out another bamboo toothbrushes again, so let me do some research before purchasing or repurchasing those plastic ones. And sure enough, I finally found a brand that is amazing and they even have the bottom of the toothbrushes, different colors. So if you have a family of five or four, or even if it's just you and your husband or you and your wife, you know who belongs to what when it comes to the toothbrushes. Cause my color, I do have two toothbrushes in my house. I have a gray one and a orange one. The orange one's my boyfriend, the gray one's mine and that's how we kind of tell them apart. He really likes them, and even at his house, he switched over to bamboo toothbrushes as well. So yes, like I said, I'm gonna say it again, if you were to take anything from these 10 items you should really rethink about when it comes to purchasing, definitely have it be number 10, which is the straws and the toothbrushes. But anyways, you guys, I really hoped you enjoyed this list. If you have anything else to add to the list to help others out, maybe leave them in the comment section below. I love when you guys are starting conversations with other people trying to help out others because I cannot get back to everybody. I wish I had an assistant or wish I had someone to help me when it came to YouTube. You guys know I still work full time, so. It is a little difficult for me to answer everyone's questions, but I love that you guys answer each other's questions and comments and concerns. I find it, I find that we have a little community going on and I just find it very lovable and nice for once. I, it's very rare that I see nice people around, like around me. So when I see it on the internet, it's kind of like, it makes me happy. So, but anyways, you guys, I will catch you in the next video. Bye.